Terrebonne General Medical Center recognizes April as Organ Donation Awareness Month. TGMC works closely with the Louisiana Organ Procurement Agency to advocate for organ donation. Tonight, we are discussing the impact an organ donation can have on multiple lives. With us today is Lana Stevens, a LOPA community educator, and TGMC critical care nurse director, Lucetta Sweet, to share important facts about organ donation and how TGMC recognizes its organ donors. Good evening and welcome to To Your Health with TGMC. I am your host, Keith Weissite, licensed clinical social worker. Thank you for joining us. Very glad to have both Lana and Ms. Lucetta. Thank you all for joining us. You know, LOPA is a very important topic. Uh, it stands for Louisiana Organ Procurement Agency, but I'm not sure if people always understand what that means. So, Lana, tell us what LOPA is as an organization. Sure, thanks for having us. Um, sure. LOPA is the Louisiana Organ Procurement Agency, as you mentioned. Uh, we are the federally designated private nonprofit organ and tissue recovery agency for the state of Louisiana. Uh, what we do is we house the Louisiana donor registry. So when you drive, you go to the driver's license bureau and get your uh, driver's license, you can say yes to organ donation there. Uh, we also, um, we facilitate the organ and tissue recovery from deceased patients to the transplant centers. We are there to work with families during a, such a difficult time when they lose a loved one and have the opportunity to donate um, their loved one's organs. So uh, we're, we're a 24-7 24 ag 24 agency and we're just kind of always busy and um, have a lot of different aspects to, to the job. So. Absolutely. And one of those things is I like the way you said that too. And that's one thing we want people to hear tonight. Say yes when you're asked that on your drive and Absolutely. when you get in your driver's license, especially young people want them to know So that. easy to do. Yeah. So let's specifically talk about organ donation because there's a difference between organ and tissue, but let's, let's talk about organ donation since sure. you talked about both of those. Sure. Organ donation is um, the process of, of recovering one organ from a deceased patient or a living donor, right. um, which we can kind of talk about that separately okay. and transplanting it into someone that would be in need. For example, the organs that we recover for transplant are the heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, pancreas, and small intestines. Okay. Um, so those are all the organs that can be recovered from a deceased patient. From a living donor, um, one can donate one kidney while they're still alive, and they can also donate a portion of their liver because it can regenerate itself. Um, also, uh, a lobe of the lung can be donated while someone is alive. So uh, that's a little bit different. When you're saying yes to organ donation on your driver's license, you are registering to become a donor after death. So living donation, uh, the process is a little bit different as far as, you know, getting that going. You'd have to actually go through a transplant center to take care of all that. Right. Versus going through LOPA for Correct. someone who has passed. And, you know, it's one of the things that I've always remembered. And as a social worker, I've embraced this very much. The Seta and I, mm -hmm. for years, worked together doing that at Terrible in General. One of the greatest rewards of my job ever in working with the staff, especially in critical care. We always talked about the fact that um, tissue donation is life enhancing. But organ donation is life-saving. People need to realize how important that is, that donating an organ is going to save somebody's life. Right. And there's so many people that wait for that. You mentioned the list that y'all yeah. manage. Um, you know, the waiting list now, it's, it's bigger than ever. Um, right. Close to 123,000 people across the United States are waiting on some type of life-saving organ transplant. They're waiting on hearts, lungs, livers, kidneys, pancreas, small intestines, like I mentioned before. Um, probably about 90% of that waiting list are waiting on kidney Kidneys. transplants. So that's yeah. that's huge. Right. Um, here in Louisiana, that number, the waiting list, the, the waiting list just for our state is about 2,000. And that doesn't seem like a real big number. Oh, it but when is. you think about um, Louisiana and how much smaller of a populated state that it is, it really is such a big number. 2,000. So I think you mentioned some of it just now, but let's talk about the importance. Why is organ donation important? Well, like I said, those numbers are just they're unfathomable to me. Um, you know, it's so important to be able to have this opportunity for our donor families to be able to see their loved ones live on through someone else. One organ donor has the potential to save up to nine people's lives. And that's amazing um, to, to think that one life could make such a difference in so many other people's lives because you're not just making a difference in that recipient. You're making a difference in all of their family members and all of their loved ones that, you know, want their loved ones here for a second chance. So, um, you know, as far as like organ donation, like I said, up to nine lives can be saved. As far as tissue donation goes, up to 70 people can be enhanced in their life um, just by one tissue donor. Mm -hmm. uh, cornea donation can restore sight for up to two people. So it's, it's such a domino effect of one person's 
decision that is just a selfless decision to be able to make such a difference in so many people's lives. And, and you kind of already mentioned it, but 2,000 people on the wait list for a kidney here in Louisiana. We also have the need, as we, and you guys travel all over the state. Yes. So again, maybe if you can talk a little bit and just clarify why organ donation is so important here in Louisiana specifically. Yeah, um, I mean, we are, we're all over the state. Every hospital is required by law to send, to call us every time there's a death in their facility. And so we need to be within a two hour driving range okay. um, to, to be able to service the patients in those hospitals. Um, so we are, we're, our main office is in Metairie, we're in Lafayette, Shreveport, Baton Rouge, and we need to be able to take care of these families as they need us. Right. And so you mentioned the wait list for kidneys. Is there a wait list for other uh, organs oh absolutely the 123,000 is is all organs together um so okay. that's you know that's all the hearts and livers and lungs and and all the ones that i mentioned before right but um about 90 percent of that 123 is is kidneys so. yeah and 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 that's a large number because typically we see from a medical standpoint kidneys that that begin to fail that we can have them replaced and, and because we can uh, it's it's one of the, not that it's easy. It's never easy to donate what, but but having a kidney, you can still live with one. Correct. Yeah, you you hear about that more that. often. Um, I right. think than the rest of the organs as far as living donation goes, um, would be kidney donation, and that is the most common. Um, which is interesting to me with even with having um a living donor pool for kidneys. Right. And that's still the most needed organ. So that just goes to to show just how many people are, are suffering from kidney disease. And you know, we're talking high blood pressure, hypertension, diabetes. These are the patients that most of us know someone with one of those things. Right. And um, so that's, it's, it's sad to say that that's, those are the people that are needing it. I like it. Well, ladies, thank you for your patience. Lana, great information. Lucetta, we're gonna to come to you in just a moment. So guys, don't go anywhere. We're gonna be right back after this short break with To Your Health with TGMC. This is huge. Welcome, ladies. Yes, your heart screenings. What are the show times? The screening is actually a test. Oh, so more of a whodunit movie, right? You learn about the health of your oh, heart. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> Let's get you two scheduled. We brought our own snacks. Oh, did you? <laughs> With our Women's Health Center, Terrebonne General Medical Center is revolutionizing the community's approach to health care. TGMC, a new way of health. And welcome back to the program again to your health with TGMC. I'm very glad to be your host tonight. Keith Weissite, licensed clinical social worker. Ms. Lana with us and Ms. Lucetta Sweet, of course, with critical care at TGMC. Lucetta, tell us a little bit about why it's so important, the kind of work that you guys do at Terrebonne General Medical Center with LOPA. Well, Terrebonne General has played an important part in um, the advocacy for organ donation and awareness. And I think we work well with LOPA um, in trying to increase the um, awareness and promote the advocacy for it. And it's important that we maintain the quality and commitment to our tri-parish areas um, residents. Um, since the initiation of the Louisiana Hospital uh, campaign in 2008, we have um, partnered with LOPA in increasing the uh, number of Louisiana registered organ donors right. um, to the list. And I think that has played an important part. Um, at Terrebonne General, we also designate April as uh, an initiative. We take a 30-day initiative to promote awareness of LOPA. Um, um, at that time, we had in 2015, we had over 30 patients that actually donated organs. Wow. Um, so that it was pretty good and we, like I said, we usually take the opportunity to increase awareness and I think it's very important and we do um, work well as far as to tr promote that. And being a trauma center like Terrebonne General is, mm -hmm. it, it, it opens the opportunity for when we have some of those tragic incidents that Terrebonne General can be one of those resources for, mm -hmm. you know, saving some other saving lives. Saving some lives. Some, yes. Those, those, those nine lives, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, which is fantastic to hear about. So then let's come back to you and talk a little about maybe some of the common myths about organ donation. Because, you know, a lot of people, what their mom and them tell them is yep. not necessarily <laughs> what's really true. So let's talk about some of those myths. You hit the nail on the head with that one, what your mom <laughs> and them tell you. I mean, I get, especially when I talk to the high school students and uh, teenagers, I always have to tell them, you're going to go home and you're going to tell mom and dad this, and they're going to say, no, that's not true, and you're going to correct them. That's right. Tell them that's the only time they're able to 
to talk back to their mom and dad. About <laughs> they give the Free correct pass. information Free about pass. exactly. Um, so I'd say one of the most common things that I hear all the time is um, that. The, your medical care won't be as good if you're a registered organ donor. People have the fear that if you have a heart on your driver's license um, and you're in, for example, a motor vehicle crash, then someone's just going to let you die so that they can take your organs. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, the way that the actual process works is so much more in detail to that. What happens is nobody, first of all, no one's looking at your license to see if you're a registered donor right. until all efforts have been made. Do we even get that phone call? Right. So your medical uh, care comes first. Absolutely. And then, as I mentioned, after all efforts have been made, do we get that phone call to find out if they were a registered donor or if they even meet the potential to become an organ and or tissue donor? Okay. Um, so that's probably one of the most common ones that I hear. Another fear people have is that they can't have an open casket funeral. And that is something that we are proud to say happen all the time for our donors. Right. Uh, we've had donor families come to us and be so proud with the reconstructive surgery that we've done after the organ and or tissue recovery. And um, we really take a lot of pride in our reconstruction surgery because this is someone's loved one. Sure. And um, more than likely, people have been to an open casket funeral of someone that was an organ donor or tissue or both. Right. And they didn't know unless their family told them. So right. um, we do take a lot of pride in that. And and have been complimented on our reconstructive surgeries for our families. Um, Cause it really, you know, it doesn't matter if one person's gonna view the body or if there's gonna be a thousand people at an open casket funeral, we want them all treated the same and that's with respect. So uh, that those are two very common Big things. Gotcha. Um, I think that I hear a lot that people have a fear of, you know, being charged. Uh, no one will be charged for the opportunity for donation and that's what it is it's an opportunity for these families so lopa will pick up all of those costs and um they will not be charged for that um i think that that's probably the most common the that i've heard ones. yeah okay. very nice well so let's go back to you let's talk about the wall of heroes because oh, that that's a, pretty interesting to very hear about good one. in um april of 2011 uh terrible in general we dedicated our wall of heroes. Um, we unveiled and had a dedication ceremony. And what the wall of heroes is, is that it's a, um, a wall mm -hmm. with uh, patients who have donated their organs. Wow. You know, given that extraordinary donation of life to another. Yes. Um, it's very precious. And, and at this point in time, we have about 114 patients wow. who have donated organs oh, that wow. beautiful. Well, it, it really is a beautiful is. it's really a beautiful nice. wall. if you ever yes. have a chance to go swing by you should mm -hmm. yeah. and then now so next we have up on the screen some of the events that are coming up right. for you guys as part of organ donation awareness month let's talk yes. about that a little bit um so. at turbo general we're going to have a flag raising ceremony and this is going to be held on tuesday april 5th it's going to be two o'clock in the afternoon and you can attend that at the tgmc main entrance it's going to be near the flagpole Right in a big circle in right front in of the, the hospital. Right in a big circle in front of the hospital. Very yes. nice. Yes. We appreciate that. Well, some really good information. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, you guys have gotten mm -hmm. better mm -hmm. over the last 10 years um, with Terrebonne General and LOPA working together to really make a difference for other people. And that's what this is about. Yes. And, and making sure that people are aware that there's no cost to them. Uh, making sure that people are aware that, you know, don't even look at the license or if there's a yeah, heart on right. there until mm -hmm. after the fact. And there's a very right. tedious process mm -hmm. about screening and making sure that people fit into the criteria for the option to donate tissue or the option to donate organs. And uh, Lucetta and her staff do that at Terrible General. Mm -hmm. Then they contact you and y'all work together. Yes. So that's really, really helpful. So Lucetta, we're going to put up on the screen where people can find out more information and so if you wouldn't mind uh, letting them know how they can get more so, information. So people can find out more about organ donation and TGMC by going to donatelifela.org to sign up as an organ donor. Or you can visit us online at www.tgmc.com or simply call 985-873-4616. Well, this has absolutely flown by because you got. We could have talked about so much more information. Yeah. Yeah. We but always I'm, do this. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. I say that every time. I know, but it's something very, very close and passionate to my heart about yes. how this is the greatest, most humble way to help others, and it's one of those things that I encourage people to always do. Uh, but thank you so much for very eloquently talking about what it is and how we here in our community with Terrible One General are making a difference to help others. Thank you for having Thank us. You. It's your Thank thing. You All righty. That's going to do it for us for Two Year Health with TGMC. Don't go anywhere. Sports is next. Hi, 
this is Laura Shimbri, registered dietitian from the TGMC Weight Management Center with the Wellness Tip of the Week. Taking note of when you start to feel full is one of the most important steps to maintaining a healthy weight. Not only will eating more slowly help you to recognize this feeling, but by stopping at the very first signs of fullness, you can help to avoid overeating and reduce your appetite. <music>